Hey folks, hope you are doing well. This is Mitch at IndieSoft. It is um, Tip Tuesday. And this week, I wanted to show you all how we can actually take an Excel file where you may have your data points in Excel and you want to maybe embed those into the IndieSoft generated calibration certificate. So a lot of times you may have some, some equipment where our standard default test points just does not align very well and you collect data in Excel, but you want to take those Excel data points and get those embedded into your PDF. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to set that up in our system. So the first thing that we're, we're going to do is um, I've got a piece of equipment sort of already staged and set up to show you how to do this. But when we go to our test points tab, um, a lot of you are familiar with seeing our standard test points. Okay, So our standard test points is where you would put in your upper, your lower limits, um, any additional columns that you may want to see presented on the certificate. But when you click on this option here, you'll notice that we have not only your standard test points, but we have what's called an Excel document, an Excel document with cert creation. You've even got an Excel range, Excel cells, um, and a few other data collection methods. But in this video, I want to point out Excel range. And what this allows us to do is I've got this Excel file. So when I go to perform my calibration event, it's going to open up that Excel file. And then I get to actually specify which portions of that Excel file are going to get embedded within my certificate. So you'll notice here, again, I've got some stuff pre-set up. So I've got my Omega 902 data sheet um, pre-configured. So when I go to view that, we do give you a quick viewing option where I can actually take a look at that Excel file. Um, when I open this up, you'll see there's that data sheet, which this is a more simpler data sheet, of course, but you know, there's, there's that blank slate. What you'll also notice is there is a drop down list. So you can have multiple different types of data sheets here. So you may have like a gauge block layout, um, in this case, uh, an Omega 902, or maybe you have some type of a multimeter spreadsheet as well. So you can have as many of these as you desire. But once you have your data sheet um, specified for this particular instrument, you'll then specify which chunk or which section of that P or Excel certificate do you want to embed within the IndieSoft generated PDF. So in my case, I want sheet one and I want cells A24 through I35. So basically what I'm doing is I'm specifying which area is going to be eligible to embed within to my PDF document. So, so you can see I have it all set up. Um, now, I do want to go and point out a few other things here. This can be done at the template level. It can also be done at the equipment level like we're viewing here on my screen. Okay. So I've, I've, I have this instrument set up. I want to calibrate it first, and then I'll walk you backwards how we actually set this up and use this. So let's say I've got my instrument and I'm ready to perform a calibration. What I'm going to do is just execute my calibration event. Um, we all know inside of here you kind of have your who, what, when, where. But you'll, I want to point out our certificate type. I have a very specific certificate type set up here um, for my Omega 902. So I have this set up. So I, it, that way it just matches that Excel file that I'm utilizing. So this is an important step to notate that. Um, as we proceed through, there's our calibration procedures with revision control, any applicable charges or discounts this customer may have. Um, of course, I've got my standard that I'm utilizing. And then we get to our data collection piece. So now the software is actually opening it up an Excel file. So you'll notice in here I've got a blank, um, blank slate of this Excel data sheet. Um, and I have filled this out here in preparation for this video, so I'm just going to copy and paste in those test point readings. But you'll notice everything's kind of spot on all the way until we get down here to this last reading where it's coming in at um, 2000 degree, 2003 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've just pre-copied and pasted that. Now, when I close out of my Excel file, um, it's going to go ahead and save that. It's actually saving it in, uh, in a temporary location here. So if I need to, I can actually reopen that and make any additional changes. So maybe I realize I, I you know, typed a, had a typo and want to fix something. I can certainly go back and do that. Okay. So when I close this out again now, what will happen is when I hit finish and complete this calibration event, what we're going to see is if we go over to our history grid, um, and here's the calibration that I just performed, you'll see my certificate. And then we also store a copy of the Excel file as well, because we always want you to have that traceability. So if I double click on the Excel file, this is actually nothing more than a copy with the data points that we saved into the data into that spreadsheet. Okay, 
But now, if I go back and actually look at my PDF certificate that the software generates, when I open this up, you'll notice that section of those data points was actually embedded in. So you'll see my temperature, my min, my max, my as found, and my as left. Okay. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking a certain section of that Excel file and we're embedding that within to your PDF document for you. Okay. So, so the way that that is actually set up, right? I, you kind of saw it set up on my screen, but there is some setup that you have to do as well. So the first thing that we want you to do is you're going to have to go in and, and put a copy of the blank data sheet into the database. Okay. So if you've never done that before, that will be done under add edit and then documentation. So inside of here, we need to get a copy of that, that blank Excel file inside the system. So all we're going to do is we're going to hit new. Now you'll notice I already have my Omega 902 data sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in Omega 902 option 2 just as a visual option for you to see. So we do want to uh, use our default with Windows Viewer option. That simply says if it's an Excel file, the Windows application is going to open in Excel. We do have some other options there. Um, I want a copy stored in my database. This is also tied to my calibration schedule group. But the next step is we're going to give this a description. So this is my Omega 902 data sheet. And again, I'm going to just title this option two because I've already got one in the database. At this point, we're going to navigate to the original source file. So on my network, um, and really just for me, on my desktop, I've got a folder called Excel data sheet examples. So I'm going to grab a copy of that Omega 902. Now here's the important piece. This is the, this is the important one. For the document type, we must choose embedded calibration document. Okay, so that basically says, um, out of all these documents, which ones are just data points? And the ones that we specify as embedded cal doc are those. Okay, with any document you put in the database, there is revision control that you can utilize if necessary, along with notes. And then you even have the ability to utilize some of our bonus fields, um, it, it should you need those. Okay. So what I've done is I've put Omega 902 option 2 into my system now. Okay. So the next step, that's eligible in the database. So now when we pull up a piece of equipment, we can actually go to our drop down menu and we'll see Omega 902 option 2. Okay. So I'm going to toggle to that and actually choose to use my, my option 2 uh, data sheet. So I'm going to delete this Excel range that I've chosen here because I do want you to see this important step as well. So basically option one, we have to go to add edit, put the document into the database itself. The secondary thing we have to do is we have to go to the piece of equipment or the template and we're going to specify which um, Excel file we're actually utilizing. Okay, which in my case, uh, I'm going to go with Omega 902 option two this time. So now here's the third important thing. When we go to take a look at this uh, Excel file, which we give you a quick button where I can quickly navigate and open that up, what I want to point out is you'll notice here on this particular Excel file, for me and what I want to embed is going to be what's in um, essentially A24, which is this column here where it says temperature, all the way down to um, I35. So that could be different for you, but for me, that's, that's what I want to go with. I want to go with A24 to I35. Um, you'll also notice my tab here is called sheet one. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this now. And basically down here is where we have to tell the software, which set of Excel data are we going to embed in? So again, in my case, I'm just going to hit new or our new icon. My worksheet name is sheet one because I simply never changed it. I want my starting cell to be a 24, my ending cell to be I 35. And before I hit OK, I'm just going to double check, and that is indeed I-35. Okay? So basically, the next step that we had to complete there was we had to tell the software which section of Excel we wanted to embed within. Okay? So now, here's actually the final step, right? So inside of here, I'm going to go open up this Excel file once more so we can see this. Now, in this particular data sheet, if you look in here, we're going to see that this is actually A24. This column is actually D24, this column is F24, and then I've got H20, um, H25, um, it's just because I clicked in the wrong spot, I meant to say H24, and then here I've got I24, okay, so I've got essentially column A, I've got column D, column F, and then column H, and then column I, okay? So now, what we need you to do 
is you need to actually go in to Print Builder and actually define a section in your certificate on where we embed that, that chunk of data points, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into Print Builder now and show you how we do that. So inside of Print Builder, we all know that's where we can build our certificates, our layouts, our forms, our packing slips, etc. So inside of here, I've already got my Omega 902 certificate created. I'm going to go ahead and view that. And then what we're going to do here is our typical banner report writer that we all know how to use. We're going to add in a new sub report called Excel points. Okay. So I've already specified that, but that's this icon right here where we can choose to add a new sub report. And if I actually just drop that in again, I can actually add the test points twice um, if there ever was a need for that. But you'll notice it says no data pipeline assigned. So the first thing we want to do is actually assign our Excel points. That's those Excel points that we've specified back on the equipment screen. So I'm going to choose that. Um, and like any other data report that we add in, we typically do want to have a shift rule set up inside of here. So I'm just going to shift these test points to where they show up after um, sub report five. So then we simply just navigate over to sub report six and in the detail band, we start dropping in our database pipeline fields. But you'll notice it's kind of pre-configured to look at the Excel point table. Okay. So in here, what I want to do is simply just choose row one because row one, which was actually column A in Excel, that's where we're storing this column right here. Okay. Now right here, you'll notice this is row D. Okay. So for me, I need to grab another database field. But this time, I'm going to grab row 4, right? Because D, A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, you kind of get the math on and the concept there. So for me, my minimum is actually row or column 4 in Excel, right? As we get going a little bit faster, you can do things like copy and paste and just move that over. And then I can go to row 6 because that was where I had my maximum. And then for me, I had uh, row 8 was my as found and then row nine was my as left so some of this was just because that's the way i had my excel file set up so there is a little bit of uh mapping and massaging that you you may need to go through to get that working um, but if i hit preview now what we're going to see is um well i actually didn't shift my test points there properly but there's my test points that were embedded directly into that pdf document so to close this out and show you this working again is the first thing we have to do is we have to go to add edit documents, which is going to be again, add edit documentation. And then we're going to open up our documents. And what we'll do there is that's where we need to actually put a copy of the Excel file into the database itself. Okay. Once that is complete, either at the equipment view or the template level, um, preferably the template level because we don't want you to do this for uh, every single you know, Omega 902. But what we're going to do is we're going to specify that that's the data sheet that we are indeed going to use. Um, so step two is we go to the drop down menu, specify that data sheet. Step three is we simply just want to go specify which cells because we don't want the entire Excel file. We just want the certain columns uh, that we want exposed on the certificate to be in part of that uh, worksheet name section here. And then, of course, the final step is in Print Builder, we would need to have a matching certificate that allows you to actually embed those, those exact columns into the cert. Okay. So from start to finish, one more time, I'll go ahead and calibrate this instrument here. Um, we launch our calibration event, just like we all normally do. You have your kind of your who, what, when, where, and your nomenclature step. The secondary step is you take a look at your procedures. Then, of course, we have our charges. Um, our standards if you're if you're inputting those and then it opens up that data sheet file um, so here's a copy of my excel file we can actually go in and um, i can fill out that content there if i need to so we'll just type in a few test points here and just for time's sake i'm not going to fill them all out i'm just going to jump down here to the bottom and fill out this last test point now again you could fill out the remainder of those when we complete that, mark that as saved, and I had a, my copy down below open as well. When I mark that as finished, what we're going to see is in the history grid, when we print and generate those certificates, here's the one we just performed. If I open that up, what we're going to see is there's those exact data points, and you can even see the gaps on the ones that I did not uh, fill out. So uh, last week I got asked once or twice about how to perform the Excel embedding option. 
I hope this video gets you down the right path of getting that going. If you have any equipment um, where your data points are just in Excel and you want those to be embedded within to your existing NVSoft generated calibration certificates. Um, with any questions, please don't hesitate to contact myself, one of your account managers, or our support team. But thank you again for watching this video, and I hope you all have a great week and a happy Halloween. Thank you.